Rollers, like these, are the original cycling indoor training aid. But far from being an outdated piece of kit, they still have their place. That is, of course, if you've got the skills to ride them. Here's how. Okay, so before we jump on and start pedaling, just a few basic setup points to consider. First and foremost um, is having something that you can steady yourself against. If you've never ridden on rollers before, it's gonna give you confidence if you can start off holding something solid, so up against a wall, or potentially better still, if you can, in a doorway, so that you've got then something on both sides of you, um, yeah, if you need to reach either way to stabilize yourself. Another thing is level ground. Um, it's really important that rollers are on fairly flat and, and even ground. Um, a final setup tip as well is just to check that the alignment of the center of your front hub is over the middle of the roller on the front. They're adjustable so that you can make that uh, you know, adjustment easy for different sizes of bikes and so on. But that's really important, otherwise you'll find that they will handle really sort of uh, nervously and skittishly if that, unless that hub is directly over the spindle. Um, another thing is to put your bike in a nice low gear to start off with. You're gonna need to be able to pedal at a reasonable cadence. A bit like riding outdoors, speed is your friend when it comes to balance. So yeah, having that lower gear will enable you to be able to pedal quicker and just keep your balance easier once you get going. Finally then, maybe something to consider if you're very nervous would be to start off using trainers rather than clipping in. At least that means you can get your foot down quicker and yeah, in most cases you can run trainers, uh, maybe not on a speed play pedal because they're quite small, but you know, on a Shimano or a, uh, a look pedal, for instance, that would be absolutely fine. Um, worst case scenario, pop a helmet on as well. If you're anywhere where you feel like if you could take a fall, you might hit your head and cause yourself an injury. So to get on, we're gonna start with just standing astride the top tube. So I get myself to this position and then I'm gonna apply at least one of the brakes or both of the brakes. And then I'm gonna pop my foot on the pedal Using my elbow to support me against the wall, I'm gonna clip in with that foot, and then I'm gonna push myself back up onto my saddle. Again, I'm leaning on my elbow on the wall here. Okay, and then clip in with my other foot, still supporting myself on the wall. There we go. Right, now get yourself nice and balanced. Bike centered on the rollers is a good idea to start with, just to give it a little bit of room to move. Again, I've got the safety net of the wall there, and then I'm gonna to start to pedal. And as I said, low gear is a great idea to begin with because you want to be able to bring that cadence up quite quickly. As you start to pedal, expect the bike to want to wander. It's gonna try and weave around a little bit to begin with. But the key tip I can offer here is try not to fight it too much. Try and stay relaxed. Try and focus on a smooth pedaling cadence because that's what's gonna help bring the bike into balance and enable you to pedal smoothly and so on. Okay, so start to pedal. Again, still bracing against the wall. Now, as you pedal a little bit quicker, as you get a little bit of confidence and the smoothness, you'll find the bike will automatically want to come into that upright position. So you'll feel the weight kind of come off your elbow or whatever you're holding on to in terms of you know, support position. And then you want to focus on the next step, which is going to be to try and look forwards as you would out riding in the real world. Staring at the front tire is going to just cause you to be sort of more nervous and twitchy and the bike will fishtail a lot more. So yeah, try and look forwards focus on a smooth pedaling style. Again, at this point, we haven't let go of the wall yet. We're just holding with one hand and starting to feel that bike come into balance, bring the cadence up a little bit. And as you bring that cadence up, you will realize quite quickly that riding on rollers becomes much easier. And really, that is the crux of why they're such a good training aid, because they force you to pedal in a very smooth, non-erratic, nice flowing cadence circular cadence, they often refer to it suples, uh, various terms that get used. So now what I'm gonna do is bring my cadence up and then just start to come away from the wall and just hold the bike as I would do normally. Again, as I said, if the bike wants to kind of squirrel around on the rollers, try not to fight it. Another good tip is to not death grip the bars, you know, try and stay relaxed in your upper body you know, you shouldn't be gripping with all your might, white knuckles. Just try and focus on looking forwards, staying balanced and staying smooth in your pedaling. And that is the, the basics of how you're gonna find riding on rollers really easy. It's a skill that, just like riding a bike, once you've got it, it clicks and you'll find it's dead easy thereafter. Don't focus too much on where the bike is on the rollers. You've got a reasonable amount of space there. Surprising, you can wander quite away 
as you can see, not gonna fall off. And also don't worry about riding on rollers and feeling like if you come off the side, you're gonna shoot across the garage. That is a misconception, I assure you, that will not happen. Even if you're doing high speed sprints and the bike goes off the side, it's just gonna stop and you'll be able to clip out. It's not gonna shoot across the room. So you've got yourself pedaling nice and smooth. You're starting to get the hang of it. And as I mentioned before, you know, the, the more you ride, the more natural that will feel and the less you'll begin to worry about falling off and fighting the bike and so on. But the next step is obviously gonna be stopping. So how do you manage to stop and get your foot down safely while you're riding on rollers? Well, the best way to do it is to slow your pedaling down take that hand off and start to lean your weight on that wall. That'll give you the confidence to stop your pedaling completely, apply the brake, and then you're back to that kind of safe position where you started. And this is something you can do actually as part of your practice. Stop, restart, get used to that feeling of the bike starting to move underneath you, not fighting it, and then just taking the hand off the wall and finding that balance point, getting used to that smooth cadence, looking forwards, and then holding the wall, slowing down, brake on, stop. And then from that position of safety, you can clip out, pop your foot on the frame of the rollers, and then clip out the other foot and step forward. Maybe taking it to the next level, some little drills and skills sessions that you can do to improve your, your competence on rollers. So let's get ourselves back on, back in. Okay, let's get ourselves riding again. First thing to do, or well, the first little drill, most basic sort of step from just getting used to riding is start to use the gears. So take yourself through the gears, start to pedal quicker. Use the big ring perhaps. And you can really bring that speed up. Try not to be too rigid, nice and relaxed as if you're riding out in the real world, up through the gears because using the gears even will just take some of your focus away from your riding. So it's just good to engage with that. And that's just making the, the riding on the rollers almost second nature. Another thing you might wanna do is change your hand position. So go from the hoods, get used to changing maybe to just the tops for, to begin with, and then all the way down into the drops. And again, you see how those little changes do just slightly send you off balance and it's just getting used to that feeling that it's nothing to panic about. What you've got to do is kind of pedal smoothly through that and the bike will right itself. Again, actually, the faster you pedal through all these drills, the easier they become because the bike is more stable as you pedal faster. Right, the next one would be to reach for a water bottle. So can you smoothly take a hand off, reach for a bottle, take a drink, pop the bottle back in. Finally then, you might want to try slowing down almost to a stop and restarting, but without using the wall. So just a really good drill to practice. Bring your pedaling, you can use a low gear for this one so you can restart nice and easy. Bring your pedaling down to almost a stop, balancing, and then restart. And then just do that a few times. It's really good practice for your balance and then restart. And all those things will just help you develop competency and confidence as well on the rollers. One last little thing when you get really confident is to try taking both hands off. That's a skill that I would say don't do until you're really, really happy. Um, you know, that's kind of quite advanced, but when you get to the point where you're happy enough to sit back in the saddle, look forwards, keep that pedaling nice and smooth, and then you can take both hands off and so on. So as I said, don't try that one until you're absolutely 100% sure that you're, you're confident, but that's just a nice progression of skills to learn on the rollers. Okay, so there we have it. As I said, rollers might be a very sort of traditional style of indoor training, but definitely not outdated despite there being fancy smart trainers and so on available these days. Rollers will give you a really different type of workout. They'll focus your mind onto really smooth and efficient pedaling. Um, you know, you can't be a gear masher or a, a kind of inefficient peddler on rollers because you'll find it very difficult to stay smooth. So yeah, all that's really good. Plus the benefit of 
engaging your core much more. When you're on a static trainer, normally your core can get lazy. So rollers will focus the core and, and your balance. So yeah, really sort of specific to real world cycling. If you found this video useful, do give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want some other interesting cycling content, head over to cyclist.co.uk for all the latest news, tech, and in-depth product and bike reviews. Thanks for watching.